Hi everyone and welcome to this presentation where I'm going to talk about a new online problem. And this problem will also motivate some purely mathematical questions related to metrics based extensions. This is joint work with Sebastian Bubeck, Nif Buchbinder and Mark Selke, and I'm Christian Köster. And we call this new problem metrical service systems with transformations. And it is based on the problem called metrical service systems, which is one of the known and most fundamental problems in online algorithms. So in this problem, there's a metric space M and some initial point P0 in this metric space. And now at any discrete time step, some subset of the metric space is defined as the feasible set. So this set, which we denote by AT is revealed at time T. And then the algorithm has to choose a point in this feasible set. So if the green one is the first feasible set, then the algorithm state has to go to this set. Then the next feasible set is, reve set is revealed. Again, the algorithm has to move and so on. And the cost of the algorithm is defined as simply the total distance traveled by the state of the algorithm. And now we say that the competitive ratio of an algorithm is rho if the cost of the algorithm is at most rho times the optimal cost on any possible input. And what's known about this problem is that the competitive ratio is linear in the size of the metric space uh, for deterministic algorithms and for randomized algorithms, it follows from what's known about metrical task systems that the competitive ratio is polylogarithmic in the size of the metric space. There are some important special cases of metrical service systems that have been studied extensively. So two examples are convex body chasing, which was studied especially uh, intensively in the recent couple of years. So here, the metric space is a vector space and every set AT is convex. And it was shown uh, in the two best papers at SODA last year that the competitive ratio is D, so the dimension of the vector space. Another special case is the k server problem. And there are also several other problems that fall into this MSS framework. So let's look more closely at the k server problem now. So in this problem, there's also a metric space, but now there are k servers in this metric space and points of the metric space are requested one by one. And whenever a point is requested, one of the servers has to be selected to go to the point. And then the next point is requested. Again, one of the servers has to go to the request. And the cost is defined as the total distance traveled by all the servers. So at first sight, it may not be obvious why this falls into this MSS framework because we have K servers and not just one. And moreover, the requests here are single points rather than sets. But the, the reason why this does fall into the MSS framework is that if we look at, instead of the metric space M, at the configuration space as a metric space for the metrical service systems problem. So the configuration space contains all sets of size K, which correspond to server configurations. So the locations of the K servers. Now we can model a K server request at some point R by the feasible set that contains all the configurations that contain the, um, the point R. So this is why it is an MSS. And yeah, which what I didn't say is that this configuration space itself is also a metric space. So the metric on M induces a metric on the configuration space. So even though many problems fall into this uh, MSS class, there are still limitations to metric service systems. One is that it's impossible to change the state of the algorithm without incurring cost. So in particular, uh, therefore, metric service systems fail to capture more dynamic environments where maybe the state of the algorithm changes um, for reasons that are outside of the algorithm's control. For instance, resources could appear and disappear, and we might not want to charge any cost for this. So this is not possible in metric service systems. And also, metric service systems don't capture a problem that's called the K-taxi problem. Uh, so. Um, Let's look at the K taxi problem first. In this problem, it's very similar to the K server problem. We have K servers in a metric space. Each request is a pair of points, ST, DT, corresponding to a passenger request for a taxi. And to service such a request, we have to select one of the taxis that moves first to ST and then to DT. 
and then the next request arrives and so on. And what's important here is that the cost is defined as not the total distance traveled by the taxis, but just the overhead distance traveled by the taxis. So the distance traveled while not carrying a passenger. The reason for defining the cost in this way is that, well, first of all, during the time when you do carry a passenger, you're not, you're not really paying costs, but if anything, you're making money. But uh, more importantly, this distance traveled with a passenger is the same for any algorithm. So therefore it makes sense to exclude it from the cost and only focus on the overhead distance. And so yeah, so we would here pay to, to go to the passenger, but then we don't pay to bring the passenger to the destination. So to model these more general problems, including the K-taxi problem, we define now metrical service systems with transformations as follows. So it's similar to metrical service systems. We have a metric space again, and some initial point V0 in the metric space, which is the state of the algorithm. And now at every time step, we receive not just a feasible set AT, but instead a transformation between two sets, AT and BT, and now the algorithm has to choose a point in the domain of the transformation. And then the new state of the algorithm will be the image of this point under this transformation. So if this is the first transformation we receive, the algorithm has to go to the set AT and now the transformation is applied and the point, uh, correspond the corresponding point in BT will be the new state of the algorithm. And the algorithm suffers cost now only for going to the state in AT and there is no cost uh, in, incurred when the transformation is applied. So why does this problem model the K-taxi problem? Well, it's similar to the way that we could model the K-server problem by metrical service systems. We look again at the configuration space. So again, the sets of K locations, the K-taxi locations. This configuration space is now the metric space for TMSS and the taxi request from a point ST to a point DT can be modeled by the transformation whose domain is the set of all configurations that contain the point ST. And such a configuration is then mapped to the corresponding configuration where the point ST is removed and the point DT is added to the configuration. And it's not hard to see that this then indeed captures the K-taxi problem. So in this example of the K-taxi problem, uh, one can see that the transformation is in fact in isometry and this case of isometries is an important special case that we will pay particular attention to. And yeah, but there are also other classes of transformations that we will have a look at. Um, but yeah, let's first focus on the case of isometries. So meaning that the distance between two points in the domain stays the same after the transformation is applied. So as a first example, let's look at convex body chasing with isometry transformations. So any transformation is a convex, uh, well, it's, it's an isometry between two isometric convex sets. Let's say in the Euclidean space, here it's the case that any isometry is a, a combination of a rotation, uh, reflection and translation, uh, well, possibly reflection. And what this means is that we can therefore extend any isometry between these two convex sets to a global isometry of the entire uh, vector space. And therefore the isometry is not really doing anything. We can just rotate the, um, the coordinate system as well. And then the isometry just amounts to a renaming of the points of the space. So therefore the competitive ratio of convex body chasing with isometries is the same as the competitive ratio of normal convex body chasing. Here's another example. Let's say we have the circle. On the circle, it's also true that any isometry of, of a subset to another subset is either a rotation or a ref reflection. So for instance, this isometry here that maps the orange points to the green points, this extends to a global isometry of the uh, entire metric space. It's a reflection in this case. So again, it's just a renaming of the points of the space. Therefore, having these isometries doesn't increase the difficulty of the problem at all. Here's a case where isometries do affect the problem and the competitive ratio. So if we have equally spaced points on a line, 
Now, um, these partial isometries do not in general extend to global isometries, but still it's a fairly easy example because what we can do is that we extend the line to a circle by adding more points to it. And now we can apply the logic from before and therefore we have the competitive ratio uh, of the two n minus two point circle as an upper bound for the competitive ratio. Well, so so the, the competitive ratio of metrical service systems without transformation on this circle is an upper bound for the competitive ratio of metrical service systems with transformation, with isometry transformations on the n equally spaced points on the line. So this sort of suggests a general recipe to always extend the metric space so that we can extend the partial isometries to global ones. So the, the first question we should ask therefore is, is this always possible? So is it possible that for any metric space M, we can always find a super space such that any partial isometry, by which I mean an isometry between two subsets of M extends to an automorphism of M hat. So automorphism means a global isometry from M hat onto itself. And the answer is that it is possible. And it was shown relatively recently in the mathematics literature that this can be done such that M hat is a finite metric space provided that M is also a finite metric space. So what this means is that TMSS on space M with isometry transformation um, reduces to the well-studied metric service systems problems on M hat. And therefore the competitive ratio is at most polylogarithmic in the size of M hat. Then the follow-up question of course is what is the size of M hat? In particular, is it possible to bound the size of M hat as a function of the size of M? So is there some function B, which we would call the blow up function such that for, for any metric space M, B, uh, well, B of the size of M is an upper bound on the size of the extended metric space M hat. And uh, the answer to this is we don't know. And yeah, so this is one of the main open problems that we are posing in this paper because the positive answer, for instance, say a, um, an exponential uh, function, uh, yeah, like if, if B is an exponential function, then it would mean that there's a polynomial competitive ratio for TMSS with isometry transformations. Let's see now how these ideas can be applied to the K taxi problem. So we are going to uh, get a, an algorithm with competitive ratio that's polynomial in the size of the metric space and log k. And the ideas are as follows. So first of all, by applying standard techniques, we can assume that the metric space for the k-taxi problem is in fact a tree. This is following from some uh, well-known embedding uh, theorems and it's losing a factor log n, but uh, yeah, we, we, are, we only want to be polynomial in, in the size of the metric space anyway, so we can, we can lose this. And now on, on this tree, we can encode a taxi configuration by a vector in this space. So it assigns to every vertex u a number xu, which denotes the number of taxis located in the sub subtree rooted at u. And for this encoding, we can now also encode uh, re taxi request from ST to DT as follows. So it's defined on the set of vectors that correspond to valid taxi configurations with at least one taxi at ST. And what it would do with such a vector X is that it subtracts one from every ancestor vertex of the S point ST and it adds one to every um, ancestor vertex of the destination of the request. And it's not hard to see that this indeed transforms the configuration in the way uh, that's correct to model this k-taxi request. And um, so, so now if, if V was just a single point instead of a vertex, uh, in, instead of the set of all vertices, then uh, we, would, we could just apply the ideas from before where we extended the, the line to a circle, but also in multiple dimensions, we can do this. And circle in multiple dimensions really means that we're going to have the torus metric. 
So every dimension, instead of going from zero to K now goes from zero to two K. And we have the, the torus metric on the space. And now it's true that any such map, which is in particular a translation, extends to a global isomorphism of, of this extended space. So therefore the K-taxi problem on M reduces to the metrical service systems problem on this extended space. And in particular, the competitive ratio is polylogarithmic in the size of this space. And therefore it's polynomial in the size of M and log K. So let's return now to the more general TMSS problem and uh, the case when the, the transformations are not isometries. So then if they are not isometries, the situation is a lot more difficult. So here's an example with a five point metric space, these five uh, green dots. And uh, the blue dot is the online location, the orange one, the offline location. Now suppose we get this transformation, which clearly is not an isometry. Now the online algorithm has to select one of these points in the middle that's in the domain of the transformation and say, for example, it goes to this one, then the offline algorithm could go to the other point in the domain. So this part incurs some tiny movement costs for both the online and offline algorithm because these points are all very close together in the middle. But now the transformation is applied and when the transformation is applied, no additional cost is incurred by definition of the problem, but the two online and offline locations have been pulled apart. And this can now be abused by a request sequence. So if the next request forces the online algorithm to move all the way to the offline algorithm, then we see that the online algorithm pays a lot more movement cost than the offline algorithm. And we can issue another relocate, uh, another transformation that moves the two points to the middle again for free. So we've, we've seen here that the online uh, algorithm pays a lot more than the offline and therefore we can get arbitrarily large uh, lower ones on the competitive ratio here, even on small uh, spaces of five points or even less points. Um, it, it's possible to do this. And yeah, of course we can re repeat this as often as we want. Um, yeah, and therefore we get this lower bound here. So, but what this really relies on is that these transformations uh, pull these two locations of online and offline very far apart. What is, what would happen if, if this can't be the case? So say the transformations are always uh, non-expanding. So they are one Lipschitz. So as an example of this, let's look at chasing contracting convex bodies. So what I mean by this is that uh, the metric space is a vector space and every transformation is a contraction between two convex sets. And uh, if you want to test your intu intuition, uh, then feel free to pause the video for a moment and have a guess of what you expect the competitive ratio to be. Like, would it be harder than uh, convex body chasing or would it have the same difficulty? Well, it turns out that maybe surprisingly, the competitive ratio is infinite in this case. And uh, the reason it's, it's infinite even in the, in the two dimensional plane. The reason why we cannot just uh, use the known uh, algorithms for convex body chasing and, um, and to modify them slightly is that they rely on the fact that the work function is convex and this property will be destroyed if we insert these contractions here. And yeah, it is in, indeed possible to construct a lower bound showing that there is no competitive algorithm for this problem. So it may seem that we are doomed, but uh, what's, what's a bit special here about this problem is that the metric space contains infinitely many points. If we have a metric space of finitely many points, so let's say M is an endpoint metric space, then uh, we, can, we can get a competitive algorithm for the case of contractions and even more generally when all the transformations are alpha Lipschitz. So here we get a competitive ratio that's roughly alpha to the n, if alpha is large enough or otherwise, uh, yeah, six to the n. This is a deterministic algorithm. And there's also a lower bound that's, um, well, essentially matching if alpha is large enough up to some factor two in the, 
uh, in front of the alpha here. Um, and the lower bound is even working for randomized algorithms. However, note that if alpha is one, so the case of non-expanding um, isometries, uh, non-expanding non transformations, then this lower bound is just one, so it's, it doesn't give us anything. Of course, there's also the lower bound that exists for medical service systems, but still there's a large gap in the case of um, uh, contractions and in particular also in the case of isometries between these upper and lower bounds. So I'm going to show the ideas of this upper bound proof. It consists of three steps. The first step is that we define an ultra metric d hat on, on the points of the metric space. And d hat is going to be a distortion of the true metric. So it's within a factor alpha plus one to the n minus two of this metric. And it will be such that any function that's alpha Lipschitz with respect to d is a contraction with respect to d hat. So we show that it's possible to define such an ultra metric on any finite metric. And uh, alpha metric, uh, what this really means is that it's a special type of tree. Now the next step is that we extend this tree, this ultra metric tree to one that's completely symmetric. So every vertex, like any two vertices of the same level have the same number of children. And the point of this now is that in this symmetric ultra metric tree, we can adapt the analysis of the work function algorithm for MSS to the case of TMSS with, um, with these contractions. So if it was uh, not contractions, but isometries, then this would be relatively simple because the isometries extend to global isometries. In the case of contractions, we make use um, of some properties that these ultra metrics have that allow us to still uh, analyze the work function algorithm. So we lose the alpha plus one to the n minus two factor in the competitive ratio in the first step because this is the error of the ultra metric compared to the true metric. And we lose another um, factor of roughly two to the n minus one because uh, we add so many more points in, in the second step where we extend the metric space. And uh, yeah, with that, I'm coming to the end. Uh, so I'm just going to mention the main open problems. So first of all, what is the competitive ratio of TMSS for interesting families of metric spaces or transformations? So we think that isometries and contractions are particularly interesting transformations here because we have, well, first of all, there are, they are natural classes. They, they occur in, for instance, the K-taxi problem and the gaps between the upper and lower bounds that we have are very large here. And then there's this uh, purely mathematical question, given some finite metric space M, what's the minimal cardinality of an extension M hat such that each partial isometry on M extends to auto automorphism on M hat? For this second question, we also give some partial answers for special cases. So for instance, if M, M is an ultra metric, or if it's a general metric, but we have swap isometries, so just swapping two points, then the blow up here is at most exponential. And in fact, this is also tight for both of these cases, but we don't have, we don't know any metric space where there's a larger lower bound. And we also don't know an upper bound of a similar form for general metric spaces. So this would be quite interesting. And I think of, um, could be of in independent uh, interest. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, goodbye.